You know about Spencer Lee and Gable Stevenson and Jaden Ironman and all the other number one seeds, but who are some of the other wrestlers you don't know that you should know heading into the NCAA championships? Let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? My name is Josiah, and welcome to Fanco Wrestling here for NCAA Championships Week. I'm psyched, and I'm sure you are too, to find out who are these seven wrestlers, one from every single conference that you should be watching come tournament time. Before I get into this, I want to ask you that if you're getting value out of all this content this week for NCAAs, drop a like. I'm going to get over 333 likes on this video, one for every single competitor in the NCAA championships. So the first wrestler that you need to know heading into NCAAs from the Big Ten is where we're going to start. We're going to go conference by conference. The first guy you need to know is Lucas Bird of Illinois. Now, I had a couple of honorable mentions that I, I just, it was so hard to choose. I, I almost chose Malik Heinzelman, Max Murin even, or, or a Ridge Lovett. I mean, there's so many great guys from the Big Ten that are quote-unquote underrated or, or under the radar or whatever it is, but you, you got to be watching out for them. But Lucas Bird is somebody, the number seven seed and a redshirt freshman. Redshirt freshman. He only has two losses on the year uh, to DeSanto. Two losses to DeSanto, who majored him in the duel, and then he only DeSanto only beat him five to four at the Big Ten Championship. So it's quite a good leap for Lucas Burr this year. He's an 11-2 record overall with his best win over the number eight seed in Chris Cannon. So he's the number seven seed. His best win is over the number eight seed. He he uh, will have the number 26 seed, Darren Miller of Bucknell, in the first round. Then on to potentially Louis Hayes of Virginia, and he would likely have RBY in the quarterfinals. If all of these things went out, if if the if the best seed keeps winning, that that's kind of who he would have. He is a good look, even if he potentially lost to an RBY in the quarters. He actually still, I believe, will do well in the quarter or in the constellations. I think he is a very good look for him as far as where he is in the bracket. And his only two losses are to Austin Santos, so who knows what else Bird is going to be able to pull out. At the ACC, oh my gosh, so many wrestlers to watch from the ACC this year, I'll tell you that. Mickey Phillip, he's one of them at 133. He's the honorable mention here that I have to mention. But Tariq Wilson, Tariq Wilson at 141 of NC State is the number four seed at 141. He's made a run at NCAAs before. He's known for making a run at NCAAs. In, at, in 2018, at 133 pounds, so when he was down weight, when he was unseated and made the semifinals of the national tournament. He was able to beat Cade Brock. I mean, that was his big win over Cade Brock, but eventually he lost to Seth Gross. He battled back through that consolation bracket, took third with a win over Luke Pletcher. He majored Luke Pletcher. And you may be saying, like, Luke Pletcher? who was number one seed last year at 141 coming in to NCAAs, a top seed coming into NCAAs. Are you serious? Could have won the whole tournament, either him or, or Nick Lee. I mean, anything could have happened there, right? Yeah, that's Tariq. Tariq the Freak is what they call him. He made the round of 12 the following year, so he didn't All-American the next year, but he bumped up to 141 after that, and I think he's just back to looking how good he looked at the 2018 NCAA championships. He's 9-0 and right now. He majored Zach Sherman at the ACCs, and I mean, he had a great ACC championships. And if the top seeds keep winning out, he'd have Brandon Courtney to Dom Demas, who, I mean, that'd be a tough match, absolutely, and Jaden Ironman potentially in the semifinals. It'd be a funky match for sure if he wrestled Jaden Ironman, but I mean, Tariq is the one to get the job done. He's been there before, and maybe he can just do it again. What do you think about Tariq Wilson? Who else are you watching in the ACCs besides Tariq? In the EIWA, there's somebody that you should know about, and that's Zach Hartman. I actually mentioned him in my underdogs video as an honorable mention, but this time I, I just had to put him into the forefront uh, and actually dive deep into Zach Hartman at 165 pounds. The number five seed at 165 is an undefeated 10-0 conference champion. He's one of the 40 undefeated wrestlers heading into the NCAA championships. He's a, here's, I think, why I've been kind of watching... Zach Hartman, and he was actually a dark horse of mine last year heading into NCAAs. I did a video about that, but the thing about him is, like, you look at you look at matches that he's had in the past and where he is now, and one of those matches, he lost to Tanner Schedule 
last year, whose schedule has just been, honestly, he's been improving this season. And he majored him this year. He beat him 9-0 to at EIWAs to stay undefeated at the EIWA Conference Championships. Listen, he's got a tough route. And 165, I've said it once, I'll say it again and again and again. 165 is the toughest bracket in NCAAs. To me, hands down, it's the toughest bracket. He'll have Roderick Mosley first round on to Jake Keating, potentially, of UVA. A Mikai Lewis of Virginia Tech, who we'll see. I mean, he, he may be hurt, may not be hurt. And Alex Marinelli, potentially, in the semifinals. I mean, and here's the thing, okay? You say, okay, well, there's no way he's beating Alex Marinelli. Well, think again. He had a tough match against him at Midlands. I was there. I watched it. I mean, Marinelli beat him, but Zach Hartman battled his butt off at Midlands. I mean, it was it was... Absolutely crazy. He made the round of 16 his freshman year. So just see what Zach Hartman could potentially do this year with how much better he's gotten. In the MAC, Keegan O'Toole is another undefeated wrestler, the number six seed from Mizzou. And Mizzou, I mean, he's in his home state. NCAAs are at St. Louis. Excuse me, in like in the state of Mizzou. Like, so hopefully, I mean, I don't know how many fans are going to be allowed in, but if I'm sure the Mizzou fans are going to be close and making the drive if they can. He's 13-0, Mac champ, the true freshman. And his best one is over the number 18 seed. So, like, the thing about O'Toole is he has a great year. He's had a great year, but he hasn't really had any crazy wins. Like I said, the number 18 seed is his best win. But this is the time to show how gritty he is. He could run into a Cam Amin or Kennedy Monday in the second round, which would be very tough. And he's got, he's just got a tough road ahead. You know, at 165, it's it's tough. But we'll get to see how gritty, how tough Kino Tool actually is. I know he's somebody that a lot of people are watching. And somebody that I'm watching for sure is in the SoCon, and that's Austin Murphy. At 174 pounds is Austin Murphy, another undefeated conference champ, 12-0, and 0, the number 11 seed in his weight class. Now, Austin Murphy, if you don't know about him, he has two big wins this year over the number 15 seed, Thomas Flitz. That's his best win of the year, and he beat the kid twice, Thomas Flitz, and he, I think he actually has a pretty good route ahead of him as far as the championships are concerned. Let's take a look at his bracket and seeing where he can take uh, potentially getting into the like, second round, quarters, semis. I think it could happen. Mason Kaufman will have of Northern Illinois first round. And if the better seeds keep winning out, Andrew McNally in the second round, both those guys, Ohio guys. And that's the thing. You know, you talk about guys that, grew up together from the same state or wrestle in the same conference. When you wrestle over and over and over again, the matches just get closer and closer and closer until eventually somebody can win. And it doesn't matter. Like it, it happens all the time, whether you're from PA, Ohio, like if you grew up or you wrestled these, these guys over and over again, it's just going to be a great match. You could potentially run into a Carter Sirachi in the quarters, I believe is where it is, or a Hayden Hastings of Wyoming. And on the bottom half of this bracket is, is Caleb Romero or Demetrius Romero. Uh, either of those guys could have a Romero semis if Austin Murphy keeps winning out. And he's just somebody who I've watched has been exciting all season and just grown so much this season as a wrestler. And he's just going to come out there and attack and, and, and just let it swing. In the Big 12s, two more guys you need to be watching out for. Uh, Big 12s and Pac-12s. Because I saved the 12s for last. Dakota Gear is... Not the number 12 seed, but the number 11 seed from Okie State. The senior, and he's actually a former All-American. So this is why I have him as a guy to watch because he is a former All-American. Placed seventh at the last NCAA championships he was able to wrestle. He qualified last year. This year, he's 15-3 and with two losses to Tate Samuelson of Wyoming and, and one of them to uh, Parker Keckeisen. So he had two losses in the season, one of the, each of those guys, Keckeisen of Northern Iowa. He'll have Devin Kane in the first round, who's a young guy, but, you know, it's it's a good matchup there. Uh, likely Poznanski of Rutgers in the second round. And the thing with Gear is he has more experience than a lot of these guys in the field. So many of them. I mean, the funny thing, this is the crazy thing, is that most of these guys at 184, which is where Dakota Gear is, haven't even wrestled the NCAA championships yet. 
the number one and number two seeds, Aaron Brooks and Trent Hiley, haven't wrestled NCAAs yet because of how young they are and because the tournament was canceled last year. So I think Gear has that slight edge over some of these guys, and I think we're going to see him do well at Pac-12's Cordell Norfleet. You know, I was looking all over the place for— there, there's so many guys in the Pac-12 as well to watch, especially with, like, some of the Stanford guys. Jaden Abis, uh, or Abbas, uh, is somebody that I, I wanted to be watching out for. But Cordell Norfleet of Arizona State, the number three seed, undefeated Pac-12 champion, 9-0. I know. I guess a lot of these guys are undefeated conference champions. Almost 80% bonus point percentage this year. That blew my mind. I didn't realize that it was that high. Cordell Norfleet is just mostly just tacking and pinning everybody he runs into. It's crazy. All but two guys. He pinned Stephen Buchanan, who Buchanan is the guy who beat Noah Adams three times this year, who was the number one seed in the top ranked guy in the country up until he lost to Buchanan. And Norfleet pinned him on the same day. Actually, kind of crazy. He's riding a 15-match winning streak right now. In his last season, I want to talk about last season too because I think that's kind of important. He had a great win over Greg Bolzak. And his only loss last season was to Colin Moore. He lost to him twice, but to Colin Moore was his last couple of losses. And you may remember also he had a big win over Kyle Connell of Penn State that helped Arizona State win that crazy upset of a duel last year. He has his, his a tough route. He'll have Rodgers of Hofstra, potentially Greg Bolzak again, who's a tough wrestler of Clarion, or Thomas Panola of Purdue. You could even see uh, a Norfleet and Bonacorsi in the semis, which that would just be such a great matchup there. Let me know which wrestlers you are most looking forward to heading into the NCAA championships. I hope that this list helped you in understanding some of the other guys in the field that aren't just the number one seeds, but now you kind of know who else you should be watching out for. Let me know down in the comments below who you are most excited to see at NCAAs.